Hello and thank you for joining us today here at Evangelist Crusaders Church Sunday morning worship. We're so happy that you decided to stay a while with us and worship the Lord. We want to let you know that we are on location at 4307 4th Avenue South in Minneapolis. Or if you prefer to watch this webcast in the comfort of your home or your car, wherever you might be viewing it, feel free to go to our avenues where we are listing this broadcast and enjoy it right along with us week to week. You can pull it up at our website, www.evangelistcrusaders.com. You could also pull us up on Facebook and YouTube at Evangelist Crusaders Church. Now, you know, we have been so blessed by those of you who have been supporting us with your prayer support and your financial gifts. And we just want to say thank you and God bless you. Invite you to continue to give if you so desire to do so. Go to our webpage. There is a link conveniently there for you. Or you can download the Givelify app to your phone. You can find us at Evangelist Crusaders. And our address is 4307 4th Avenue South. We have also been blessed by the written correspondence that some of you have sent. It blesses us to know that this ministry is being a blessing to you. So if you prefer the written word, feel free to address all of your correspondence to Evangelist Crusaders Church, Post Office Box 7291, Minneapolis, Minnesota. The zip code is 55407. We've been so encouraged by all of those of you who have been worshiping right along with us in-house and on the web. And we want to just say that we are praying for you to be encouraged and have hope. Now we're going to go directly into the word of God at this time. Listen and be blessed. All the things the Lord gave me, I'll condense them as small as I can. But I wanted that song to be sung because it parallels with the movement that happened from 1619 when slaves was brought over up until now, still holding on. And it's a correlation to my testimony as being a child coming from West Memphis, Arkansas, to here in Minnesota, still holding on. And the Reverend, you kind of tied a lot of my message. Uh, you spoke about it. It's mainly about children and how to train them and raise them up in the way of the Lord. And um, we have to be mindful of how we talk and do things around our children because uh, they are this generation. And we have to role model them the love of Christ in our homes and around them. And we also have to role model to them that evil and hatred and bitterness will always be, but we have to sustain it and be who God called us to be. And we have to be mediators and peacemakers. Well, still holding on to God's unchanging hand. I was not supposed to be here today. I was not supposed to graduate high school. I was not supposed to be standing up here as a member of this church, well, the reverend, said the devil, but God had other plans. And I thank God, Jesus Christ, he had other plans. I um, came from a small town, and my mom had six children. I was number seven, oldest child that first didn't make it. And I never had that natural feeling of, you know, you can be this, you can be that in my community and around me. But I thank God, Jesus Christ, for the few people that I did have in my life that was my neighbors and that took the time to pour into me what they could at that time and what they could. And I thank God mostly for my oldest sister who passed away. She was trying to instill things in me. Like you said, your dad was busy at the church. My mom was busy, newly saved and when she was pregnant with me and trying to fulfill all these duties and all these requirements at the church, I was not always there, kind of left alone about myself. But she would always try to input in me and tell me things, you know, how she wanted to see me be and grow up and the things she wanted me to do and be. And with her life being taken so short, I just got angry. I got mad. I got upset with God. But I thank God so much for Jesus Christ because when I came to Minnesota, I was lost. I didn't know what to do. I just know I had to leave from where I was at. I wanted a better life for myself. I wanted a better life for my children. And I knew that it wasn't there in Arkansas. 
So when I came to Minnesota, I was headed to take my GED and just get, you know, my GED and, you know, start my career. And this lady, this white lady, Maggie Quinn, she got a hold of me and she said, my little sister, she said, you have a lot of credits. I want to introduce you to this program where you can get your high school diploma. And so she introduced me to this school called New Vistas, which was a school for young teen moms and young pregnant um, ladies to go to. And internet school was just so focused that I want to do better, I want to be better, I want to show my kids that education is important, you need it. And working really hard, um, the lady there at the time was Gladys Randall, and she was the director of it. And I came and um, I had uh, double T stack teeth and I had a cross eye and she looked at me and she's like, oh, little sister, we got resources up here for you now. And I was like, okay. So she took me and I had the surgery performed on my eye and, and I tell you, there were people back at home who were so mad and upset, like, wait a minute, hold on. If God can do this, if God can make people to have this ability, why not be accessible to it? So with Gladys Randall's help, I just started, you know, seeing myself different than where I came from and start pursuing things that I didn't even think was possible for me from where I came from. I graduated on time in 93, and I was a dropout. I dropped out of school in 10th grade and was pregnant with my second child at 17. But to God be the glory. See, the devil don't want to tell you, or he, he don't want you to know who your bloodline is. We don't know who our bloodline is. Are we from either one of the tribes? Are we from Esther? Are we from Job? He don't want you to know your bloodline, who you're from, and what you are. He trying to put these pictures in front of you by what you've seen or what you grew up in, what you experienced, and that's who you are. But that's not who God say we are. Just like the people that were in slavery, they pressed and they pressed and they pressed on because they knew it was a change was going to come. They knew this is not going to go on forever. My seed would not endure this. My seed, my seed, my seed would not endure this. And we have to keep pressing on. I thank God that he put that in me to keep pressing on, not just towards education, but towards him, loving him, trusting him. When I came here, I was searching for a church home, searching and searching and searching. And I went to a few. I didn't find myself comfortable until my auntie at the time, Gloria Rogers, uh, brought me here. And when she brought me here, it was like I was home. And I never left. I stayed. And I thank God for that. And one of my scriptures here is train up a child in which they should go. And when they grow old, they will not depart from you. And we have to do that. That's like our calling. That's like what we have to do because this is the generation. This generation is going to be here to the next generation. And we have to input in it. We have to model before them who Christ is, who Christ is to us. Like uh, my sister testified that, you know, her son was fasting. You know, and now his children get to see him fasting. And guess what? Their children are going to see them fasting. And that's how we pass that down. We cannot let it slip. You know, yes, um, I'm, I'm even like Sister Dr. Carol. She's not here. But last Sunday she talked about how we're African Americans. And there is so much division among us as who we are and what we are. I'm a child of God. Whether you want to call me a black American, African American, black, but they started out with, you know, the word that's, you know, really used for, for somebody that's ignorant, unlearned, and stupid. Then it was Negro. Then it was color. Then it was black. You know what? I'm a child of God. You know, because when the robots come, I mean, I'm just going to say, you know what? I'm a human from the USA. It doesn't matter what you are called. It's what you know you are and who God's called you to be. The Bible says we are to talk with our children daily about the word of God and about who he is. And that's just so lacking. That was a strong knit back in the early hundreds because the family was so knitted and they were so close together. Everything and a lot of things had came in between to separate the family, separate the unity, separate the faith. But when you're holding your ground and when you're going through all that you've been through and you're still holding on, you're still holding on through your trials and your tribulations, through ups and downs, you still holding on? There's been times I've been holding on with both hands, like, Lord, you know what I'm going through. I love you. You know my heart. But I don't, I don't see no way out of this, but I know you do. I don't see a way out of this, but I know you do. At the name of Jesus, every demon has to flee. Every demon. So that's one thing that I was taught 
by my mother and my grandmothers. And, and to give uh, a black history to my grandmother, my daddy's mother, Oni J. Scott, her and her sisters, they were a village for us. They were a village for me. I seen them sisters going to church every Sunday. I seen them getting together at one of the houses, praying and knitting and doing all type of things. And they were just so focused. And we didn't hear no gossiping, backbiting, talking about the pastor, talking about the people at church. We didn't hear none of that. If they said it, the kids weren't in the room. But we seen them praising God, giving him glory. And a lot of them didn't have much. They were going through things, but they still was praising God. And that's the thing that I took hold of as a young child, no matter what I'm going to go through in this life, because I'm going to go through some stuff. I've been through some stuff. Probably had to go through some more stuff. But I'm going to continue to keep praising God, Jesus Christ, because he's my all. He's my everything. He is enough. He's all I need. I tell my children, like, I love you guys. But if you guys forsake me and everybody else forsake me, guess what? My Bible says he's more for me than the world or against me. So I'm going to be all right. I'm going to be okay. The devil will come in many ways and try to disturb you, disturb us from serving him, from being who he called us to be. And we can't allow that. We got to keep holding on to God's unchanging hand. I asked a question about the children actually sung it last week about read your Bible and pray every day. That's how we grow, we grow, we grow. And the one thing that people don't, didn't want the slaves to do was to know how to read. They didn't want them to know how to do anything but take care of them and serve them. Well, when you got a burning desire inside of you, when you know who Jesus Christ is, you don't need the education of man. You don't need to have what man can give you. The Holy Spirit will give you everything. Did not Jesus say, I will not only make you fishers, but I make you fishers for men? So the thing of it is, is that when you are taught something, you're not taught it just to keep it to yourself. You're taught it to teach somebody else. But Jesus holds nothing back from none of us. Even as a, as a slave and not knowing how to read, they still had a burden desire. All these contributors that African-American black people have made to the United States of America, when I did my wall at work, I did uh, the, the, uh, the health care, black history health care contributed to the United States. I was blown over, pacemaker, conjoining twins, first surgery. So many things. And I just was like, Lord. But like I say, don't get recognition for them. Don't ask for it and don't need it because we're looking for that when we get to glory. When we get that well done, good and faithful servant. I tell the Lord, when I go through things, I say, okay, Lord, I'm taking this for the team. I will like another ruby on my doorbell. I will like another ruby around my mansion because we go through stuff, and stuff hit us. If I have a little poem here that I'm going to attempt to read, but keep holding on to God's unchanging hand. No matter what we're going through, no matter what we're faced with, I call it Be Love Black History. Because no matter what, it's not a coincidence that black history is in the same month as February, that we celebrate, you know, Valentine's Day. And you know the history of Valentine's Day was giving honor to a man that was murdered because of his love and his righteousness for people. And so black history was, uh, came about, what the, as the children told you last week, because he wanted it to be in the month that two presidents had gave honor and, and, and contributed to black people's being free and their birthday. So that's why he decided it would be in um, February. So I just thank God, Jesus Christ, for all the knowledge and power that he's given me in education and also in him. Because without him, that knowledge and power is nothing. You can gain the whole world and still lose your soul. So we need education because the Lord, you know, given us the opportunity to have education. And as, as being a woman, a black woman of color, African-American, what you want to call it, we didn't always have these opportunities. We didn't always have these things presented to us. And that's why I try to encourage these children that I work with and my own children, get, get what you can, get all you can, because power is knowledge. And when you have knowledge, you have power. But we see, read your Bible every day and pray, because this is our knowledge here for everything that we need. You may not have no degrees. You may not even have an education or high school diploma, but you got the word of God. He will teach you and give you everything. Our God gives us so much talent and wisdom. You wouldn't even be, a, you'd be amazed. How you get that? How you know that? You ain't been to nobody's school. I've been to the school of Jesus Christ. 
I've been to his school. He's taught me. He's teaching me. Everything that I need to know, he's teaching me. I can't let go of his hand, even if I think I can. I can't. I can't let go of his hand. There is just no pleasing man. No matter what you do or what you don't do, there is no can with man. That is why I can't let go of his hand. I have fallen so far as to be pulled down by quicksand, allowing myself open to the devil's hand. You see, I can't let go of his hand. I almost had listened to those that said she wouldn't make it. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ, I'm still on my way. There is no way I can let go of his hand. And that's why today I can stand, because I can't let go of his hand. And be loved like history. It's mostly about training up your child in the way that they should go. And this is the way they should go, the word of God. Sports is good and all that's nice, but they need to know who Jesus Christ is. They need to see us modern in every day, fasting and praying, reading our word. You know, we get upset. We get, you know, we get angry, but let's not sin. And if we make a mistake, let our children, let, let people see us go back and apologize and go back and, and correct that. Because they're, they're looking at us, they're, they're little sponges, and they need to see Jesus Christ in us at all times, and it all matters. And we need to also keep talking to them every day about the Word of God. Every day showing them how good God is and how precious He is. Every day. Not only is this Black History Month, but I say don't just love in February. Love every day. Because Jesus Christ is love. He died for the whole world, not just those that believed in him. He died for the whole world. And when I see people, I don't see color. I see you as a man of God, a woman of God. I see you in need, or I see that he blessed me to be able to help you. So today, just be love, black history, and we can't hold grudges. We can't be mad and upset about what was happened two, three, four, five hundred years ago. Because slavery did just in when it came to America. Slavery was you read about slavery in the Bible. So for those that try to tell you, oh, they want you know they want to bring you over to learn the white man's uh, word. And I get I get a lot, you guys. I get a lot from my friends and certain family members. I still go home and I'm still just so overwhelmed by some of the black pastors and bishops still talk about the white man. Jesus Christ died on the cross for all. Doesn't that what John 3.16 say? He died for the whole world. So if anybody got any ill will in, in their heart towards another race because of their color, something's wrong. Is Jesus really living in your heart? Because I can't see that. I, I can't fathom that. Yes, it's out there, but even those that are out there, you still supposed to do what Jesus said. God forgive them for they know not what they do. So we still have to love and show Christ because we know this ain't a home. We, we, we're down here. We live down here. And, of course, there's things that we need of and God knows things that we need of. But to stand for holiness, to stand for Jesus Christ, we're going to be rescued. We're going to be tried. There's going to be some rough time. But still keep holding on to Jesus' hand no matter what happens in this life. And teach your children, your grandchildren. You have neighbors. You have community people. This is a village, and we need to stay a village because these children out here going to hell dying because they don't know who Jesus is. Nobody's teaching them. Nobody's bringing them to church. But we're their neighbors. We live in that community. We shop at the stores that they shop at. It's our job. It's our responsibility to teach them, to train them, to show them love and kindness, and to not to be even prude against them. There are so many women of God, people of God, believers that are under attack through their children, their grandchildren. We're under attack. But guess what? We ain't going back. We stand firm to God's not change his hand. So I thank you very much for your time, and I appreciate the opportunity, and I will do it again and fully do my message. But I just wanted to just get that out. Be love, black history, no matter what. Stay connected to God's not change in hand. Thank you. Wasn't that a powerful word from the Lord today? I trust that there were some answers to your questions. But perhaps the main question that you may be asking yourself is, how do I get to know Jesus as my own Lord and Savior? Friends, I want to let you know that Jesus died on the cross for you. God sent him here because he loves you. And the Bible says all you have to do is pray 
and ask God to forgive you for your sins. Believe it in your heart, and the Bible says you will be saved. So won't you pray with me right now? Just repeat after me. Mean it in your heart, and you will be saved today. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for loving me. I thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. And Jesus, I ask you to be my Lord and Savior. Help me every day to live my life for you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Friends, I know that if you prayed that prayer because the Bible says it, God himself promised that your name is now written down in the Lamb's book of life and you have now begun a journey walking with the Lord that I guarantee you, you will never forget. We invite you to come here to Evangelist Crusaders Church. We are a Bible-believing ministry. Feel free to come and listen to the word and be blessed by teaching in the word or else find a Bible-believing church near you, wherever you might be. We encourage you to get into the word and study it and pray and talk to God every day. You are on a wonderful journey, friend, for the rest of your life. God bless you. 